Ramble. Thank you to Chime for sponsoring today's episode. All aboard! <laughs> the Tripod. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. How the frick you doing? It's a beautiful day, guys. It's... It's a core two Zach and Miles special. That's right. It turns out that schedules around the July 4th week sort <laughs> of when you have a melt week away. where they melt away when you have a day that's sort of in the middle of the week that's like this is a holiday and then you sort of end up that me and my boss are going to the Starbucks drive through Can I tell you real BS Uh-oh. that Monday is work and Tuesday's off and Wednesday's work now as... The owner of the company. I probably could have made Monday off, but we didn't. You can give every day off. We just probably would go under. And I, I found it to be quite bullshit. I'm like, who's the joker in charge of this nonsense? Wow, we're already at Starbucks drive through We're making record time this episode. I know. We really got to figure out what the episode's going to be after the drive through After the drive through After the drive I expected a line. Wow. I expected... Wait, look at this. Frozen strawberry acai lemonade and frozen pineapple passion fruit lemonade are both returning soon. That feels like a, a tease, to what be totally honest. What the crap is even that? I gotta go all natural here with an iced americano. An oleato? Okay, you got no, it. No, absolutely not. Hey, Mark, we're gonna get a... Iced americano? Iced americano. It's gonna be a grande. And I'll get an iced chai latte with oat milk, please. Uh, and that will be it for today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, people may be wondering why I didn't ask for a little vegan treat. It's because yeah. I've been to this drive through one too many times. Yeah, we, this is sort of, and again, we're back in the park. <laughs> and I've kind of decided that the iced chai is my little vegan treat. It it's is not vegan, sh- though. With oat, I guess. How dare you? Yeah. It's it's vegan. And it... Eggs. And there's no <laughs> eggs. It's, it's full of eggs. And raw, can you add a raw egg to my thing, please? Would you eat a raw egg? By the way, there's a helicopter going by. Yeah. They're looking okay, for don't us brag. once again. You got your company card? Or you want me to use mine? I got a company card. <laughs> Dude, do you think he'd let you have one? Yeah, they could. <laughs> Freaking me. dork. Literally, Zach doesn't even have I a company have card. have one. It's silver. Hey, Mark. What are you guys up to today? We're, uh, We're recording, recording a podcast. podcast. Nice. What are you up to today? Oh, you know, I'm just working at Starbucks. <laughs> there you go. Any uh, dickhead customers come in today? Other than us? <laughs> Other than... Not today, not today. Not today? That's good. I know. Yeah. How was your fourth? Did you have a wild one? Pretty solid, yeah. We went to Woodland Hills and kind of sat at the park up there with the fireworks. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate you. Thanks, Mark. Uh, I, I don't need a straw. I'm all right. Yeah, we're good. All right. Thank appreciate you. it. Take care. Have a good one. Should we just keep going back through the drive-thru and ask Mark more questions? <laughs> hey, we bought he kinda, another... We he, bu- was, he was <laughs> enigmatic. We bought a chocolate croissant so we could talk to you again. He's like, all right. I mean, I guess, yeah, we, me and my friends went to see fireworks. Anyway, here's your croissant. <laughs> well, so here's the thing. This is one of those situations where sort of last minute the schedules... I mean, I want you oh, to right. think about Summer it. Summer loving. Yeah. yeah. Rainy's on a vacation. Yeah. Keith's on a vacation. That's right. And Four I want you to think boys. about it not that I didn't plan the episode well, but just that... Just that the the unlimited potential of today is really, like, overflowing. Maybe this episode is called Zach and Miles Find Inspiration. I kind of like that. I kind of like that. What's inspiring you lately? What's Uh, gripping and ripping you? And by the way, at this point, you're basically parked, so you can hold the mic. I could. (laughs) You could, but you're holding your tea. Yeah, well, I have a tea and I have my chai, because I made a tea not knowing we were doing a Starbucks drive-thru. Yeah, you got to assume, man. You got to assume. I got to. At this point, come on. Come on. What, you expect me to do my job without my little drive through Yeah. Mm. I am having an urge to go to the forest. I would love that. Would you like to go to the forest? Do you know a specific forest? Oh, I know a spot. Because, by the way, can I tell you, I almost sent you a text this weekend of a, a tree-lined street. What? That, like was the real deal oh my god compared to the bs that you brought me to so How i'm just dare like you? i'm by the down way, to go to no by the way i brought you to a gorgeous little street in sunny right, burbank pulling up the fucking fu- oh, 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 oh no zach is spilled. zach could not have spilled more tea on his penis oh uh, okay well you didn't have to say it like that well, i would say on my crotch area it's the medical term zach <laughs> I'm not going to say crotch because that's not that's not the, the correct medical term. Where is my... I spilled it <clears> myself <throat> for no reason. Let me show you this picture I took. But I do... Oh, yeah, because I want to see that. I mean, I've been, you know, I've been trying to seek inspiration in lots of different places recently. What's inspiring you? 
You know what is inspiring me, actually? Animals, recently. They sort of got back into vogue. My dog was scared about the fireworks, and that was kind of inspiring to me because he came up to me and gave me a little hug. Oh. You ready for this tree-lined street? Yeah, let's see it. Where the fuck is that? <laughs> it's good, right? We gotta go there. Isn't that We good? definitely gotta I go there. I think it's too far. For the record, Miles did have a great creative today. It I was did. gonna involve the Grimace shake and a graveyard, and then he got in and he didn't know that it's July now and Grimace's birthday month is over. I thought that it was gonna be like so fun and everyone was gonna be so excited and for fun to flirt with. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was gonna be fun and flirty. I will say, so just to do some some pop culture roundup, the Grimace shake trend yeah. might be my favorite organic trend yeah. of the past year if not decade i mean if i'm mcdonald's there's no way i'm getting through june without having grimace pull up a ukulele and apologize <laughs> there's just no fucking way how do they miss that what a miss i, I did see someone draw a photo <laughs> that was that oh come on uh, that's great and the best the best one i saw the best meme was it was if you recognize this you you're too online and it was a text uh <laughs> that said hey i'm filming i'm dropping this dope ukulele apology video next month. Oh, do you want to come through and do a verse? That's so and it was funny. in the style of the Mr. Beast text about being on the submarine. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, the Grimace Shake, the reason I love it, I mean, there's just an inherent absurdity of people taking this, what was supposed to be an organic trend by McDonald's and then turning it into this dark, absurdist humor. And in doing so, they've they created the perfect, thank you, anti-capitalist trend, right? Yeah. So McDonald's is trying to get people to uh, participate in their trend so that they can sell more shakes. What people did instead uh, is turn it into something so perversely dark that the company can in no way <laughs> participate. endorse, <Yeah. laughs> participate, or capitalize on it. Yeah, exactly. And that is just such a beautiful, perfect, fuck you middle finger yeah. to a corporation. Um, and in doing so, created this beautiful participatory uh, uh, anti-capitalist movement. I, I, it's I just, really interesting. I mean, I, I think and it's, it's also just great absurdist comedy. Yeah, and people are doing like cinematography, basically. Like that's kind of what I, I was like. This is like hilariously well done. Like How many a times did I say anti-capitalist in that sentence? It felt like a lot. It felt like a lot. Maybe though. three. I think that you need to actually chill. <laughs> I'm a capitalist through and through. No, but um, no, I think that when something like that comes along, that's like. Yeah, it's almost a fuck you to the company, but we all get to have fun with it. I mean, that's a blast. But then I did want a Grimace shake, and I did not get one. And apparently they taste like Fruit Loops, which, why? I don't know. Do we want to talk about the ukulele video, or do we want to not touch it? I mean, everyone is aware that, like, it happened. Like <laughs> That is the craziest thing to ever happen? Yeah. I, maybe, I don't need to, maybe I don't need to touch it. I mean, <laughs> at this point, like, this is going in. So if you want... <laughs> I don't know. Like, what is there to say? Like, we don't have to talk about it. I think it's just the state of the internet. To me, what's interesting about it is just the um, the bravado of self-unawareness. But, like, that I think is pervasive with a lot of internet stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where people at a certain point, um, you know, because they've put on lipstick and done a funny voice, they think that they can't really do a wrong. I'll say one thing and it, then we'll move on. Okay, here we go. I don't care for people who make content around or for children without a concern there we go. for said children. Yeah, I agree and with that. And if that extends to you putting children in your videos, I think you're probably a bad person. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it's 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 an interesting line too cuz like uh I've obviously got a little babe and I uh have been dressing him up for clout. <laughs> yeah, I mean that makes sense by the way. <laughs> No, I mean, it's kind of a funny thing because it's like I do feel so much joy when I take a little picture of him and I want to post it and stuff. And I think that like mostly that's probably fine. I but you just have to think about it. I genuinely believe that there needs to be sweeping legislation against child family vloggers. Oh, family vloggers are I like... I think it is the most yeah, dark, that's different, fucked up thing. It's the way that you're interacting with a, your child is influences the way that the video turns out. Instead of being like, oh, me and my family like went to the beach and like... 
we're just kind of like, I'm like documenting what, I, but even the documentary, it just changes the interaction, which is sort of odd. It changes the interaction. I, I mean, yeah, I think it's bad parenting, one. But, you know, let's look at it from a, a child and child acting perspective. Yeah. In the 70s, uh, there was the famous example of Gary Coleman, uh, uh, his parents, you know, he was the biggest child actor in the world on different strokes, right? I'm getting that right? Yeah, I think so. And... You, you know, hugely famous. What you talk about, Willis, right? He didn't see. Dude, a, let's, just the, let's just get that one more time, but do the voice. <laughs> what you talk about, Willis? <laughs> I mean, it's adorable. He was great. He was so talented. So fun. He didn't see a penny of that yeah, because crazy, his parents yeah. took all his money. <clears throat> yeah. So then they created something called a Coogan account, where if you are a child performer, which I was, <gasps> all of your money goes into a savings account. It cannot be touched until your 18th birthday. Now you have all these freaking YouTube parents who are putting their children. I mean, that's labor. That is performance. That is labor. Not to mention all the psychological damage it's doing on them because they, uh, their their assumption of the love that they get from their parents is funneled through their performance and making thumbnail faces. Oh, it's so gross. Uh, and so you have all that psychological damage, and there's no guarantee that they see the money from that. Yeah, it's like... Yeah, that all of that is so wacky, and just every single child star has written a book that was like, this was damaging to me. Like, it, there's just no real cases where they're like, this is actually fine, <laughs> I'm good now, I'm like, totally happy and stable, and I have a good relationship with everybody. Now, does that mean there's no way to make content with children? No, of course not. There, there are Barney, success, Sesame Street. successful guardrails and ways that you can do it. They're obviously also very talented children, but... My point is, is that there are no guardrails that exist for YouTube and YouTube children. And, oh, I just find it oh so gross. Let's move on. Here we go, Zach. So you had a 4th of July plan. Uh, how did it go? What did you do? It didn't really feel like a good time to be celebrating America, but I was no. appreciating the day off. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of feel that about most holidays. Most holidays feel pretty... Um, severed from their original meaning to me. Yeah, right. It's just a break from the relentless churn. Yeah. And no, by the way, I right now, I'm just it. driving blindly. I'm kind of liking the vibe, though. It's sort of a mystery box episode. Yeah, we don't know <laughs> where we're going to end up. But I like the direction you're going. Oh, we're, we're turning right! Uh oh no. <laughs> <laughs> You crashed into the fucking phone pole. <laughs> Um, no, I'm liking what the direction you're going because we're sort of there's these giant obelisk hills that overlook Los Angeles. Yeah. You know what though? I've always been like, what if we go to the top, top and of a mountain? Is that even possible? I think it is. Are we? Oh, FedEx trucks turning around. All right, FedEx trucks turning around here. Yeah. I, there's all these these hills, and I'm always like, I mean, it's sort of the question of can you get to the top of the hill? Which is a metaphor. That's always the video game. In any video game I'm playing, Zelda, whatever, I'm like, I see that mountain, I'm going to get to the top of the I'm hill. I'm going to get to the top of it. I got to get to the top of the hill. Hey, gang, before we move on in this episode, yeah. uh, wow, that sounded like an ad. It sounded it like really, I just... Sorry, did you just do an ad break in the middle sounded, of us talking? It's. I didn't mean to. I just wanted to... to ah, fuck. That's what the future is going to be. It's going to be YouTubers doing paid media mid-roll ads in their conversations. Hey, before we move on in this conversation at Thanksgiving dinner, I want to thank my sponsor, Squarespace. Well, it's kind of an ad. It's an ad for us. I just wanted to give a little housekeeping yeah. and tell the good people that over at our Patreon, if you... What are you doing? You just removed. You just moved the microphone. because I hear a little hiss and I was moving the, the just, cables around. I am in the middle of talking. Yep. <laughs> Uh, if you're listening to this, you probably like our goofy conversations. If you want more of those, yeah. we have a brand new exclusive show yeah. on our Patreon, <clears throat> the Try Tripod Pod, which is what I'm calling it. Yeah. It's not a sanctioned name. Tripod Plus is like I think the official title for now. Yeah, but it's the Try Tripod Pod. Yeah. Um, where we're gonna be doing an exclusive episode once a week, and we are gonna specifically be doing a deep dive into old Try Guys content. So old and new, old and new. So we're gonna be, you know, rewatching old videos, giving you behind the scenes tidbits and information about how we did it, reacting to them, uh, and just kind of talk and shop. So the Try Try Pod Pod, uh, aka the Tripod Plus, aka Rainy's Little Corner. Yeah. A new Rainy's Little Table. Rainy's Little Table. <laughs> Thank you. A uh, new Patreon exclusive, so you can go check that out. Yeah. Originally we had like, so we had the after pod for a while and that was fun. And it was sort of just like, oh, we tack on, you know, 15, 20 minutes at the end of a thing. We're trying to make this more of a full episode closer to 30 minutes, 40 minutes. And, uh, they're a little bit more specialized. They're in the studio. They're a little bit more like 
their own thing as opposed to like, oh, the end of a previous episode. While my it's ears are popping, by the thing. way. Yeah, we are fully oh climbing my God. a mountain. Wait, we're literally on a mountain. Yeah, and it is. It's a podcast on a mountain. Podcast on a mountain. And it is, could not be more overcast. Oh, you know what it is? No, it's smog. Oh, it's fucking post 4th of July. Did you Firework know Firework yucky. The worst qual- air quality in the world is Los Angeles County today. After July 4th and after New Year's, it's like, or at least one year it was. But I know, it, um, I remember there was a year where the sky was so thick yeah. that it stung the eyes. Yeah, it's like, because there's it's such a big county, I think it's about the winds and the way the valley is and stuff, that the worst air quality in the world is uh, the day after 4th of July. And my little shithead dog wouldn't pee in the toilet, so I had to bring him outside. <laughs> my little shithead dog won't pee in the toilet. <laughs> Do you have aspirations? I mean, here's a question, Zach. Of have, teaching my dog to pee in the toilet? Yeah. That would be cool. So, But then I feel like the dog's going to piss on the seat, and it's going to be, like, no one's fault. Yeah. Do I have aspirations for what? Um, To be ever be a singer, because I feel like a lot of YouTubers oh, are like... Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? Do, <laughs> to ever be? That's all I've ever aspired to be. Miles? It opens you up, I think. If you don't know, yeah. all I've ever wanted to be is a rock star. <laughs> I don't care about none of this shit. Why do you think all he, these fucking food videos? Uh, fuck them <laughs> all. Why do you think he's always on tour? Yeah. Comedians want to be rock stars. Rock stars want to be comedians. Yeah. I so when I was growing up, I spent a lot of my childhood going to concerts. Yeah, that's that's right. what my dad did for a living. Mm-hmm. Still does. Sure. And so I like my first uh, 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 exposure. We at the park? We oh, just wow. took the back way <clears throat> to, to the, the park. To the park that we know. That we kind of started well, that's at. That's kind of disappointing. That I want to get to the top of the mountain. I think we can get to the top of the mountain here. Well, Let I me Google Maps. We you keep talking. I I'm going to Google Maps. We're getting to the top well, of the Well, you can't mountain. hold the mic. <laughs> I can. I'll pull over. Okay, pull over. All I ever wanted to be growing up was a rock star. I had bands, mm-hmm. they were bad. <laughs> I had an original song. Did you ever do this? Did you have a band? I did have a band. It's called. Oh no, you're gonna want to keep going this way. Oh, well, you said that. As All I right. Pulled into the lot. We could have you do a donut. That's... <laughs> All right. No, the car. You're gonna flip the fucking. Pop my tire. You're gonna flip the fucking car. <laughs> Podcast where we flip the car. I did have a band. I had a band called Boys Loco, and we were com- <laughs> we were a comedy band, and uh, we had a couple hit songs. You're gonna make it right. Um, songs. we're gonna a couple hit songs. Um, namely, um. Uh, How old were you? Be, uh, I was 13, 14, maybe around there, 14, 15. Okay. And uh, we had a song called BT Dubs I Love You, uh, the text message love song. Like and that? BT Dubs I Love You. Do you remember it? I L your smile, I L your clothing, baby, and I L your style. Yeah, this way. <clears throat> then we had one song, huge shout out. It was called John Lepofsky Got the Girl. Now, you might be asking, who's John Lepofsky? No, he I was know. our teacher. He was, oh. He was our teacher, and we, he, we, the song was about how he got his wife and how he fucked his wife. <laughs> <laughs> it was like of like the college they met got a shout out. It was like a whole thing about how he met John his wife. John Lepofsky got the girl. It was John Lepofsky, John, John Lepofsky, Lepofsky, John, John Lepofsky, Lepofsky got, got the, the girl. girl. And by the way, me, I don't play a single fucking instrument. I'm all vocals all yeah, day, baby. Yeah, I, I believe that. Yeah, so that's kind of like where I was at and how I was thriving. My bands were more in the elementary school days. Um, I, I'm talking first grade, second grade. Uh, I had one song. Third grade. Third grade. Fourth grade. grade. I had, I had one song called Zappers, and it was, uh, <laughs> now mind you, this was kindergarten, first grade, second, second grade, grade, third grade. grade. Uh, so, uh, God, this is going to be so embarrassing. What are the songs? you got to sing it. Uh, it sing was, it full voice. It was sing genuinely for me. Definitely about Star Wars. <clears throat> And the music video was gonna be like me playing drums and playing guitar while like pew pew was going around us. And so it was zeppers <laughs> bouncing off the walls. Zeppers, I think running through your halls. Running through your halls. Uh, and I think it was, and then the bridge was when you shoot a zapper out of a gun, your dreams are gonna come true. You better watch out. One is coming. That kind of goes hard, oh, though. Hell yeah. We're at a mountain. And we got to walk up. We're going to climb it. Yeah, we got to climb we're it. climbing a fucking mountain. But wait, you said the air quality is so bad. <clears throat> yeah, I know. So I we're going to. It doesn't it. matter. It's fucking it's worth, worth it. it. We do so, this for you. We do it. We doing this for you, y'all. 
I'm um, stoked. I'm stoked too. Okay, we're so I'm in the top of Inspiration Mount. It's co- literally called Inspiration Mountain, I think. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See you outside. See you outside. Summer is the season of spending, and it's already here. I just did a weekend away with my friends in Palm Springs. Maybe add a couple little weekend trips. Obviously, I gotta get new clothes, need a new bathing suit, let these gams shine. And if you're gonna be spending, you gotta do it right with Chime's online checking account. Chime's online checking account has tons of benefits that millions of members love, like fee-free overdraft of up to 200 buckaroos plus. Get paid up to two days early with direct deposit, all while managing your money on the go 24-7. Sign up for Chime today and make this summer the best one yet for yourself and your wallet. Get started at Chime.com slash TryGuys. That's Chime.com slash TryGuys. Chime is a financial technology company, not a bank. Banking services and debit card provided by the Bank Corp, Bank N.A. or Stride Bank N.A. Members FDIC. Eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Access to direct deposits up to two days early depends on timing of the submission of the payment file from your payer. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. Honestly, it is good to get into nature to get a little bit of inspiration. So I, I, I want to tell you, I've been actually exceptionally inspired lately. Really? And really uh, coming up with some big plans Interesting. for the gang. Uh, <laughs> and I don't know how to talk about it without spilling the beans a little too much. Yeah, so, you don't want to bean spill. I, well, and it's, it's... Oh, God, fuck, I'm already out of breath. You got to tilt the, the camera started looking at the sky. There we go. There we go. So it's like, I don't want to be coy, but I also don't want to tell what's going on like prematurely, right? Yeah. You don't want to prematurely tell. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of the things, so, I mean, let's, let's look at where the Try Guys is and where we're going. Yeah. <laughs> The is so funny. <laughs> it's, I, it's do you want to so, go? Here's a question. Do you want do you want to walk faster or slower? By I, the way, we're walking in the in the worst fucking air quality in the yeah. world. Here, we'll take take a break here. Okay, so state of the how bad do you think the state of the try guys? Yeah, how bad do you think the air quality can be right no now? No way. It's got to be perfect. It can't be that bad. It's got to be perfect. Yeah. There's no service here. If we die, if we get lost, we just die. That's all right. We're gonna. We'll go if, slow. We'll go slower. What if? What? Okay. What if we go slower? What if we get lost and we have like a little like 108 hours situation where yeah. our arm gets trapped? 127. Over. I don't know where you go. 108. <laughs> I was thinking about lost. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally. <laughs> and uh, and then this is a documentary. I kind of like that found footage. So anyway, state of the try, guys. I mean, it feels like obviously we're we're coming up on a year of a big change, and yeah, you're almost pr- almost we're, we're like what three quarters half yeah. of the way through. Sure. And so yeah, things things got shaken up. Sure. Uh, fuck, I'm so out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just <laughs> stop here. Let's just stop here. Um, so things got wow, this is beautiful. Yeah. Things got shaken up, and so we tried to come up with. A plan, yeah. Uh, to how of how to make things more exciting. Then we yeah. had some more shakeups, right? Sure. I was out. Keith was out. Right. Eugene was out. He's right now promoting a movie. Right. We got summer loving. Keith's on vacation. <sighs> <laughs> Are you good? I'm gonna be so good. I'm gonna be fine. I'm gonna be great. <laughs> so. <laughs> something that we're going through right now. Yeah. I mean, early in the year, we kind of had to get through some of our rushed releases right we had some that were like okay we have one day where we have to record a bunch of videos and that was out of necessity and it's certainly not by preference Mm -hmm. um something that has happened is that in october we got a huge influx of subscribers Mm -hmm. which is really exciting right you know a lot of new people coming to check out the channel sure but they're not real subscribers they are people that were expecting some drama. They were expecting maybe ukulele videos on the regular. Yeah, right. We didn't deliver that. So slowly, those people have unsubscribed. It was about a 200,000 bump up. Yeah. And now we've slowly been atrophying those people as we return to normal. Sure. That means that every month we have a negative metric. We have been... We lose subscribers. Negative subscribers every single month as we return to the mean, return to the average. Yeah. That then tells YouTube... 
well, this channel is not very good. Yeah. Right. Every time, every time people watch this channel, they leave. Yeah. And so YouTube then feeds our videos to less people. Right. And so less people means less views. Less views means less revenue. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't want to be like dramatic. It's not like we're hurting for revenue. We're doing fine. But it certainly gives us less room for experimentation. It, it tightens yeah. the straps a little bit. So whereas we want to get to a place where we are, you know, doing the vision that we set out, which is uh, exclusively shows and yeah, thinking right. about our higher tier formats, the stuff that I think the audience gets most excited about, the stuff we get most excited about, we're kind of forced by necessity for right. this period to, uh, I don't know, churn and burn, right? You got yeah, right. to put, have uh, more of an output, um, which can stretch us thin a little bit. Yeah, I have thought about um, trying to do a big unsubscribe campaign. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, sorry, that's crazy. That's so funny. <laughs> like, like I just want to kind of get it all over with. But I'm afraid that the only people that would see that are the like the true. Like, if you're listening to this, I'm not worried about you. You're probably subscribed <laughs> you're probably interested, and you're probably interested. So I'm like, how do we do like unsubscribe July? <laughs> And we just fucking purge everybody so we know that we're going to have a shitty July. And that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. We plan for it. But then August, you all come back. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so to pump the videos. Yeah. yeah. That's great. So so unsubscribe July unofficially. I will say we're getting closer. Yeah. So we had been at like a negative 17K, negative 15K, negative yeah. 10K. This month we're at negative 1,000. Okay. So we're getting getting closer. And I'm guessing that's zero. just because, like, yeah, you get massive attention yep. for this big dramatic thing that happens, and then all these people are just like, oh, man, like, if they talk about it again, I want to kind of know, like, people love the tea. People love the tea. And and this is just, I think, broadly speaking, switching hands, uh, <laughs> a, a challenge that we have and a challenge we need to continue to navigate, and part of my inspiration of of being an algorithmically dependent company yeah um it is that you always have to grow that's also just kind of like business and capitalism 101 like yeah. if you're not growing you're dying i don't want to grow i don't need to grow <laughs> we have a great company yeah but youtube wants us to grow let's go over here yeah what's over here uh youtube wants us to grow and if you're not growing you get punished so right. that's <clears throat> that is a challenge um and sort of leads to that question of inspiration. Oh my God! Wow, look at this mountain. This is inspiring. I uh, this is one of those moments that makes me wish I had a drone. We do. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking wish. You just put your arm up high enough. <clears throat> yeah, it's basically a drone. Now I will say that the air quality is bad. Oh, you can see it. You can see the thickness of podcast the podcast at the mountain in the worst air quality in the world. I. <laughs> The air quality is uh, really questionable. It's honestly, what's nice about this is you're sort of, you are being vulnerable in how you're talking about the channel, but you're also being vulnerable because you're sweating, <laughs> panting, walking up a mountain. What do you think, dude? Should we keep going? I think we should keep going because I think that we're not far from the 0.6 uh, okay. lookout All point. Right. Um, Someone is walking up the trail and he's going to hear us and he's going to judge us. No, don't worry about being judged, man. I, I mean, I that am. ship has sailed. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> You think it's this way? Yeah, probably. Yeah, it definitely is. Right, cool. That was a bike trail. Oh, interesting. So, <clears throat> and walk slow because I don't want you to pass out because then it's like I have to like be responsible for murdering you and like, well, you know. you would, no. Nick and Rachel are going to be like, okay, well, your department's kind of responsible for the death of <laughs> Zach. Of Zach. Like, that's not I fun for anybody. I don't think that I would die. I think you would have to. This will get a million views though. Strip me down and carry me down the hill. Yeah. I mean, that again will get a million views. So if you're worried about views, then, like, we could kind of, like, push you to the brink. I'm not worried about views. Oh. <laughs> I don't care about oh. it. It's just the forced necessity yeah. of the the job. Yeah. And I and so so the the inspiration I've had is is how do we separate those those means and modes 
Right. And <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. What is means? Yeah, it if doesn't. You could, yeah, <laughs> sorry. If you can go back and means and modes. If we know that we need a certain output to sustain, yeah. uh, but we also find the most value and satisfaction from our high tier shows, how do we shape the channel in a way, shape the company in a way uh-huh. where we are able to focus our energies on those high value shows yeah. um, and have more of a uh, assembly like approach to to the things that uh, and now are more of a necessity. And now assembly like approach. <laughs> Uh, 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 so, so, <laughs> sorry, it just talk, tell that to me as if I'm a baby. Um, is that we, like, it's. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, uh, we are coming up with like a new, I mean, a lot of it's just logistics, right? Yeah, it's, right. It's we came up with, Erica, our head of production, came up with this awesome new schedule to kind of give us a sense of regularity so that like podcasts are on Tuesdays, Mondays are for brainstorming and wrapping production, Wednesdays and Thursdays are for shooting. Right. So something like that is just a way for us to, you know, have, and the production team to have a sense of regularity. Yeah. Um, (laughs) um, And then it's also about formalizing some of our formats so that we, you know, yeah, I don't want to give away too much. Yeah, I guess that's true. No, I do think that um, I'm excited for the scheduling part of it. I think that's going to make it easier. How's it going? <laughs> Doing all right? Look at this doggo. He's just living <laughs> oh, yeah. life. I wish anything made me as happy. <sighs> Whoa. <laughs> oh, my God. Whoa, Zach. I will say, though, like the obelisk-style mountains that are around us, it does kind of inspire me. <clears throat> I'm trying to break up my routine as much as possible, which right now, like my routine with having the little baby is like pretty consistent. I wake up with him, although that's like always a new adventure every morning, pretty much. But I find that just breaking up your location routine does actually help going out into the worst air quality ever and just (laughs) you're wearing shorts, which I'm real jealous of. You're wearing pants and you came from acupuncture today. Yeah. Yeah. Just kind of. I asked, um, my mouth is dry. (laughs) <laughs> Are you good? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Do you want to get back to the car? Uh, maybe. All right, cool. I I don't just... want to push you to the brink. I've said this before. <laughs> um, uh, but I'm gonna stand on the edge. Yeah, we got to get a thumbnail. So uh, I went to my acupuncturist today, and I asked, uh, when I was done, if there was a limit for how many needles you could put inside my body. Okay, what? And she said no. <laughs> she said there's no limit. <laughs> And there's no limit. The limit does not exist in terms of how many needles yeah. Zach's gonna have in his body. She said that I she could she could make me fucking pinhead. I kinda like that. I like the idea of getting a lot of needles. Because I was looking actually, you know, recently I looked at the most viewed videos on our channel. Yes. And I was kinda surprised. Yeah, it's um uh, I mean you what what did you expect it to be and what did you find? I think I ex I don't know what I expected. I think I just was like this feels like a real random assortment of stuff. Like, I was like, oh, the dumpling video from a million fucking years ago. And I was like, oh, yeah, Jonathan, like, you remember this? And he was like, I didn't shoot that. And I was like, oh, I guess I shot that. But it yeah. just it was so long ago. But um, I don't I'm know. filming another dumpling video. With, today. Today yeah. with uh, Keith and YB. So yeah. Keith actually is here. He just decided to not be here. Yeah, he, didn't, he decided <laughs> to not be in the podcast. He's today. driving back today and, yeah. or last I don't freaking know. Yeah. But but a lot of it is looking at past hits and figuring out ways to be iterative on it yeah. without being redundant and reductive. Yeah. So um I heard this thing of, you know, look for your outlier successes and is there a way to replicate and repeat them? Yeah. Which we've done a really good job of for things like without a recipe and eat the menu. Sure. Um but there are some standalones like uh, like a good example is is the bone cracking video, which is our oh, most yeah. viewed video on this channel ever, which is surprising and wild. So uh, I said, okay, how do we do something else like that? And that's where the the extreme massage video came from. Right. Let's let's. And that cr- did well. Did pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was fun. 
and it was fun to do. So the new one that I, I just pitched the other day was looking at our drunk and stoned driving series, yeah, which yeah. I adore. It's so good. And I was like, okay, what else should you not do when you're drunk? What else is bad <laughs> when, or what else is inhibited by being high? Yeah. So first I pitched uh, <laughs> drunk for stoned raising children and Rachel put a quick kibosh on that. That's really funny. Uh, I didn't mean real children what as you- I've established <laughs> at the top of this episode. But uh, anyway, I, maybe we will do that at some point. Drunk versus stoned <coughs> corporate interview. <laughs> like get people who don't know what the video is and be like, we're just doing an interview video. That's really fun. <laughs> get fucking so See, stoned. Wait, that actually is kind of great. That's kind of good. That. Get can like I a get, law firm or something. Can I get this job <laughs> stoned? Yeah, exactly. That's so nerve wracking. Yeah, especially if it's people you don't know and like you get like they don't know it's a it's a maybe hidden camera too, so you don't have the luxury of having this crew around like laughing. Right. Um, yeah, you have to try and be straight faced. What if we get like we we <laughs> land a big flashy interview with Rolling Stone, <laughs> and they That's they so don't know funny. lizard. Look at that guy. Yeah, you, I thought I should catch it because I've no. been playing video games. I know. Oh, that's a really good point. I've been like playing Zelda, Zelda and I, every every time I see the lizard, I've been encouraged to run and grab it, and then yeah. I realize no, I have no pockets for lizards. But I think Drunk vs. Stoned is a great format, and uh, and I think corporate interviews funny. Anything like serious raising kids is kind of a funny idea. So, but... so the one that we're gonna that I'm trying to go forward with is an obstacle course. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so I, I big told, waiver, big waiver, <laughs> big waiver. Well, I told Erica to look into like a free running academy. Oh like, my God. That'd be terrifying. Uh, some like basically the places where you go to practice parkour and they're like giant jungle gyms for adults. Yeah. Uh, and doing that stoned would be really silly. What do you, what if you did a drunk versus stoned candid competition ster- series? Drunk versus stoned. Mm, go on. Drunk versus stoned pissing myself in a Walmart. <laughs> I don't know that. I don't know that the control of doing that sober is is less crazy. Yeah. If anything, the sober one is the crazier part. I mean, the goal, like the goal of that type of video, is to be educational content, right? So, yeah. I mean, we've kind of bastardized that format and then just done it as like a game, which I think is, uh, frankly, the shitty version. Yeah. Okay. Like we did drunk for stoned operation, which is like okay, that's cute, but it's a game. Yeah. Right. right? What's a try? Whereas the the what the hell is that? Is that a squirrel or a skunk? I, squirrel or skunk are like an ocelot. What the hell? Oh, is whoa! That thing? Those are interesting. This what is like the... weird marsupials that it's... are kind of running around. They are squirrel adjacent, but that ain't no squirrel I've no, ever seen. No, it's a desert squirrel. It's, it's a desert a squirrel. Gopher looking ass. <laughs> It was jet black, but not jet black. Like a dusty black with its yeah. tail Fucking up into the Fucking Punxsutawney Phil looking ass. Where are you? Show yourself. Do not fall off the edge of this cliff. I wasn't planning on it. That'd be a big bummer. You'd be dead for sure, right? No. Oh, I, I would see just it down there. Wait, whoa, that is a weird looking squirrel. It's a squirrel, but it's a weird looking squirrel. And we're not here to squirrel shame, but... Don't you squirrel shame. Weird ass desert squirrel. I know. Oh, man. We should do this more often, you know? Yeah. <laughs> maybe not on July 5th. <laughs> yeah, maybe not on July 5th where it's unbelievably... Like, you can see... You can't see the mountain that's like... like you can see a little bit of it, but it's clear that there's sort of a filter, like a fog filter. Uh-huh. It's quite romantic. I know. Um, yeah, I... By the way, fireworks-wise, did you ever blow your hand off with fireworks when you were a kid? I like, did. I don't have a hand. Well, so when I was a kid, we'd go down to South Carolina... And you'd get like a duffel bag full of illegal fireworks, bring them back across the border to North Carolina, and then you'd shoot them at your friends. Like you sort of do like a Roman candle shoot. So they're legal in South, but not in not North. Not in North, yeah. Oh. So we'd go down with like a duffel and 80 bucks cash from our allowance. <laughs> okay, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. A bunch wait. of them. Uh, so I never did that, yeah. but I'm curious. How did you? What, how did you make money when you were a young kid? Okay, so I cleaned the. Gu- <laughs> this is probably dangerous, and I shouldn't have done this, but I cleaned the gutters off of my <laughs> my neighbor's roof. I mowed, how old are we talking? I mowed lawns. Middle school. Okay. Like I, I, I remember he had me like tie in, and I, and I cleaned his gutters, and I, I uh, did some yard work and stuff, and I would mow lawns. Um, my parents gave me like a very small allowance. I think it was like. I don't even remember, but they would give me a small allowance, but really I would mow lawns and I sometimes would babysit and, um, yeah, mostly it was that like I was doing my neighbor's yard work. 
So I shared this memory with Maggie this weekend, and I didn't realize how crazy it was until I said it out loud, <laughs> where when I was in second or third grade, this yeah. is the Zappers years. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, I didn't tell you, by the way, that the reason that my band broke up yeah. is because uh, two of the kids got into a fight, <gasps> and they shoved each other no. into my my Lego uh, I believe it was a Death Star, or or it was some sort of Lego ship, some yeah. sort of spaceship, uh-huh. and they shattered it. No. And you know that once a once a Lego is broken, yeah, there's no putting it back. No together. putting it back together. Also, I was so woefully unaware of of popular music. Yeah, because my dad raised me on classic rock. So I, you know, we had our first inaugural band meeting. I came fresh, full of ideas. Yeah. I was. I had gumption, and I I pitched Zappers, of course, instant classic, huge Ca- hit for, Car- for everybody. Carrots, our sophomore runner uh, follow up. More really, of the course of that. Really, uh, carrots, they are the only vegetable for me. Carrots, very good for the economy. Academy. The economy. Oh. It's Are a, they good for the? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Who so, cares, man? It's just a song. <laughs> Why are you getting on my jock? It's fucking art, bro. <laughs> so yeah, let's go look over here. So uh, uh, one of the kids uh, pitched a song, and he sang, "Biggie, Biggie, Biggie, Can't, can't You see? see?" And I didn't know that that was a song. Yeah. So I was like, "Wow, that's some bold ass songwriting." Yeah. Any hoozles. So he plagiarized Biggie. Yeah. And you thought that he invented it. I did. That's awesome. And I wasn't really sure it was our sound. Yeah. But I wanted to be respectful. Now, do you ever have a desire? Well, first of all, the music thing, I think that that's just sort of a classic, it's like a classic YouTuber thing to do. It's like, oh, like, I conquered Instagram. I conquered Twitter. Yeah, now I'm going to conquer the stage. Now I'm going to conquer the stage. And I've been having a desire recently, because again, I, I think I mentioned this, I was all vocals, right? Yeah, so, like, yeah. <clears throat> the joy that I can bring to a music... Hello. Hi, how's it going? Enjoy the, your hike. Um, the joy that I bring to music, I think, is much more uh, vibe and much less mm. musical talent. But I think I have a good... I have a good performing skill. You've got the you've got the X Factor. I've the got the X Factor, but none of the other stuff. <laughs> right, which I think there's a lot of... a lot to be said there. I think yeah. that sometimes a band just needs a frontman. Like, I could just be there and be like, look, I can kind of sing the notes, but you're really having me here for the pizzazz. I can put on a show. People love the front man, yeah, right? right? What is Queen without Freddie Mercury? What is Harry Styles without Harry Styles? Exactly. So what if we did a band yeah. that was just front men? Yeah, so like, there's not much music, but it's just so much people being like, just how's charisma. it going Chicago? Woo! Lots of pointing. Yeah. Pointing over here. Here we go. Pointing over there. And like when Harry Styles is funny, it's like way funnier. He's got like a stand-up comedian. Well, but here's the thing. He's got like a stand-up. You've seen him live? He's got like a stand-up comedian. Well, like, so, <laughs> the bar is a lot lower yeah. for his joke. It's because he's so He'll charming. Be like, kind of a funny city, Philadelphia. People are cracking up. And so, it's like, what? Like, that's not even a joke. Someone Harry. holds up a sign that says, do you like pickles? And he reads it and he goes, do I like pickles? I guess I do. Yeah. And then it's everyone's one, like, fuck yeah! One million retweets. By People the are way, loving it. absolutely no shade here. We no, I stand, love Harry. we love it. I love Harry Styles, genuinely, but I just think it's funny that, like, it's because he's got that charisma, that X factor. And, like, you're the like. R- the Riz, if you will. You're like, oh my God, the comedy's just a bonus because he's so good at music. Yeah. And I think that that's, like, what it raises the bar. And also, like, he's like, oh, he can act too. Like, that's kind of great. Like, and I think he's top three stand up comedian musicians you've ever seen. Oh, my goodness. Uh, this is in no order. Number one, yeah, Billy go. Joel. He's just funny on Charismatic stage. storyteller. Interesting. Dude's got drops bars. I, I get served the Sabrina Carpenter doing the final little lick of that song all the time. <laughs> Which one? She's like, and she does like a little joke and she's like my little filly on the bladest she does like a little acrostic poem at the end of every of, of their songs if you don't know Sabrina Carpenter it's who Olivia Rodrigo was singing about oh oh yeah by the way vampire it's a bop vampire is a bop and then Sabrina Carpenter has a song that's like 
look, don't even blame me. Like, it wasn't even my thing. Like, we were already broken up when they started doing that thing. Wow. But then Olivia Rodrigo, I don't know. I don't know what the whole beef is. I do like Vampire. I think it's good. Yeah. I'm curious to see the whole album. Okay. I think it's good. <laughs> I think it's good. Okay. <laughs> okay. You know what I have been bopping to, though? Because I'm not really a music guy. <laughs> Genuinely. Like, You're I'm more tr- of a front man. I'm tr- <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get back into music because I find that I was such a Let's podcast. get back in the car. All right, that's fucking this. hot. For, for sure. No, I agree. We're going to get sunburned, by yep. the way. I Speaking of vampires, our, t- our pale white tell skin. Your, tell your story. Okay, so. We uh, have three stories. We're going to tell your story, then we're going to go back to our top three, then I'm going to tell you what I did as a kid for money. This is like a herald. Yeah, it is. I've been listening to Post Malone recently, and it's really been making me feel things. I find that <clears throat> music, unlike podcasts, is sort of a... Uh, it's allowing me time to think. A wise woman named Rainy Toll once said, quoting someone else, that music decorates time. And that stuck That's with me. Really a beautiful quote. <laughs> Rainy's got a good? lot of wisdom nuggets. I it fucking stuck with me. I think about it all the time. I think Rainy genuinely will be the Ira Glass of her time. Ah! I think that she eventually will have a This American Lifestyle show where she like provides wisdom and interviews people on a profound level. Okay, can I pitch a show? live on the air mm-hmm. and then we're gonna hear about post malone then we're gonna finish our top three stand-up comedians yeah, sure, you got it. Then <laughs> you got it. yeah sure uh so thinking about the idea of iterating on hits yeah we years ago did our labor pain simulator mm-hmm. and it was the biggest video we had ever done and we never really returned to that yeah. lately people have been doing cramp simulator uh, it's been going big on the TikToks. We just yeah. did a cramps video. It was really fun. We learned a lot about periods. Yeah. Talk to an OBGYN. Talk about vaginas and why people don't understand them. Why men are afraid of them. Mm-hmm. All this stuff, right? Um, I'm not afraid, but yeah. <laughs> I ain't afraid of no ghosts. Uh, so, but I was like, why? There's got to be, like, we are, we're the labor pain simulator guys. Yeah, that's, yeah. Our, that's, that's where we were made. Right. <clears throat> so I was trying to think of what we could do, and I don't know that this is the answer, but one idea I had was doing our take on Hot Ones, yeah, where it's a cramp interview, yes. and it's, <clears throat> but specifically I thought it'd be funny, fun if Rainy led the interviews, so funny, and was specifically earnestly talking about uh, uh, gender and yeah. how you benefited, like. How do you think you benefit as a man? I think that's a great idea. While you are going through increasing levels of pain? Yeah. I don't know if it's too derivative. I well, I guess what is the to me the closest example of like what that's like is not hot ones, but like um Z-Way. That's what I said to Rachel. Yeah. I was like I think we give it a little bit of a Z-Way but less less confrontational, which is why I think Rainy is the right choice. Yeah, cuz Rainy's really good at asking actually genuine questions, but there's like uh, they're vulnerable. They're they're invasive. Yeah, they're, but invas- earn- they're, <laughs> yeah, they're earnestly no. invasive. Yes, I agree. maybe that's the name of the show. So, dear audience, I would love to know your <clears throat> thoughts on that. Like, is something like that fun, or yeah, is it too close to a Hot Ones or Z Way, or is there something there? I, I think the idea of making it an interview series specifically around gender or uh, uh, privilege like there's yeah. something interesting there cuz especially you're putting the 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 guests in that uncomfortable position yeah that's nice um and i thought you know we could start with me and keith and if it does well we could uh you know broaden it out to i think that's great i think it also people. would do well on social that's yeah so i want to make that um that's a cool thing i mean i think that like i mean we were talking about this the other day but i think that that would also be a show that would benefit from like a cool little set in our studio. Because mm-hmm. I think we could do a lot of cool different like sliding sets for stuff like that. Yeah, we have our our backdrop. And that was something that I, I pushed because uh, we had a meeting with Ellen Digital years ago. Mm-hmm. The digital team for Ellen DeGeneres. Yeah. And they said this thing that really stuck with us, which was uh, that they have their set. Yeah. And that is a character. So that even if <clears throat> Ellen isn't in the show, you know, they had our, our good buddy Kaylin Allen was doing content. They had oh, other people doing stuff, but so long as it's in the world of the Ellen, set. people recognized it and yeah. were like, cool, this is part of this extended universe. I don't know that ours has ever really done that, but yeah. that was the idea behind it of yeah, having sure. like a, a, a set. Yeah. Number two, <gasps> best stand-up comedian. Uh, I'm gonna go with Lewis Capaldi. 
He recently had to cancel his tour because of Tourette's, which I is saw super that. sad. Yeah. Um, but my sister brought me to see his show, and he was so unbelievably funny and charismatic, yeah. especially compared to how beautiful his songs are yeah because right. they're all about love and heartbreak and mm -hmm. and his voice is so romantic but he'll be singing the most romantic thing you've ever heard <laughs> and like people will cheer and he goes shut the fuck up <laughs> and and that's not you know his his Tourette's I don't believe it doesn't manifest that way but he'll like tell people to fuck off like in the middle of his songs if it's too romantic oh that's and funny it, it, so his way of kind of like undercutting his own yeah. um his own uh, like earnestness. Sweetness. Yeah, yeah right. I don't know. I just I found him such a delightful <clears throat> performer. Uh, really enjoyed him. Oh, that's cool. I know. I didn't really. Okay, know. so so far we've got Billy Joel, <laughs> Sabrina <laughs> Carpenter, and Louis Capaldi. Capaldi. By the way, a, a banger crew by blunt rotation. Is Harry Styles going to be on the list? Because I think he could be. I think he's funny. Uh, but I've been listening to um, Satellite recently because it's on. I've been. I know that that's like not a new song. Specifically, that song only. Oh, because it's on the. <laughs> it's it's on the Spotify Pop Rising playlist, mm -hmm. yeah, as well as Doja's new song, which I really think is a fucking bop. Attention. Preach, King. Uh <laughs> I think it's good. I like Doja a lot. Um, I think that new song is kind of a bop. And then I'm really struggling to figure out who my third is, because I want to be like, I'm probably Childish Gambino, but I've seen him live, and he's, it's such a He's in a it's character. character. Yeah, yeah it's so he's funny. not funny. Like, I think that, like, um... Yeah, like like pop stars, like genuinely, there are a lot of pop stars that I think are pretty funny. Damon Albarn from the Gorillas. I don't think he's my number three, but he's just a goofy. He's a goofy goober. Haley Williams seems cool, but I don't know if she's being funny. She's just being cool. Yeah, who's? She's calling people out and going "fuck you" and dancing and stuff, and I like that. Who's a stand-up comedian? Bo Burnham, but he just does comedy. That's too too close. Yeah. Wow, maybe doing a top three list for both of us was too ambitious. I think it, oh, it was for both of us. I thought you were holding it. Post Malone. Is he funny? I don't know, but I do like that new song, Morning, that he's doing. I don't know how new it is, but... Again, I'm, like, discovering pop music from a while ago because I just... It's changing my life. <laughs> it's changing my life, and it's giving me time to be like, yo, like, fucking... Yo. Shit is so real out yo. here. You know what I mean? I've spoken on this before, but I do think that when I finally <laughs> embraced pop, cult, pop music, yes. my life became happier. A hundred million yeah. percent, dude. I think that that's, like, a thing that's holding a lot of people back is that... Um, you know, you know what, actually, this is an interesting thought, and then we can kick it to the last segment, but um, uh, I think that in the world of streaming and stuff like that, and pop music will always, always be pop music, new music will always be, like, more powerful, but I think in the area of streaming, like, in the 80s and the 70s, I'm sure I've said this before, maybe not on this show, but um, in the 80s and the 90s and whatever, like, the music the kids were being raised on was pop music that was popular at that time, and that's the music that affected them, kinda. Like yeah, you know I mean, what I mean? there's like, a little bit of like we conflate stuff because there was there's always been culture and counterculture, like, uh, like right. But the point is today, you could be raised and be like actually like the Smiths are the best fucking band, yeah, because of streaming. But before those CDs are not being at like you know hair like uh, hawked as much. But because of streaming, you're like, oh yeah, like. My favorite album is an album that came out in 1965 because my parents like that, and that's what they're exposing me to as a 13-year-old in 2023. Preach, King. <laughs> Get that on a fucking Try Guys t-shirt. Um, so when I was a child, yeah. I wanted to buy Pokemon. This is the story you've all been waiting for. <gasps> and the way that I raised money... Yeah. Uh, I just, I have to tell the story because I teased it, is I gave massages. Oh, like to who? <laughs> to anyone that would agree. I would give little back massages to my parents, my cousins. Uh, I, <laughs> this is a crazy story. I don't know. How much would they pay you? I don't remember. I feel like it was probably like five bucks, ten bucks for, you they know. They can't have been good. Oh, I had strong little hands. Your hands? Yeah. <laughs> pull over Your the car. little boy pull hands. Pull over the car. I'll no, give you, a you can't massage right me. No, you can't massage me. Pull, pull over the car. You can't I'll... massage me, and I hate having to keep telling you this. <laughs> um, <laughs> wait, that's so Both on mic and off. I, I <laughs> hate having to keep telling you this. You do not massage me. Um, that's so. What's funny. it like working at Try Guys? It's fine. It's but fine. It's actually Zach's give you always insisting on back rubs. It's like. <laughs> You would think he would have learned his lesson, but... <laughs> he just has got to get into into that meat. 
Just gotta yeah. get into. He's always going. You just Let got- me get into that tough meat. I'm gonna loosen you up. He'll always come by and be like, mm, "Seems like you got a lot of knots in there." Yeah. Ooh, ooh, so much tension in so the shoulders. So much tension, bud. Um, bud. bud. He always calls you bud while he does it. Um, but that's wow, my back is wet. My neck, my back, and my <laughs> and my crack are pretty tight. Now, are you going to bleep that? Are you going to leave it in? I'll probably bleep it if I remember. Mm. Um, but anyway, the point <laughs> narrator. is, narrator. he did not remember. <laughs> he did not remember. The point is, are you afraid to say you're afraid to talk about female anatomy? Well, wow. I'll say vagina. I just feel like I don't want to use a derogatory term for the place that we all came from. You see that kid just ripping that electric bike? Yeah, we should get electric bikes, but and then one of us can be killed. Um. I'm always afraid to ride a bike because I'm worried. I'm gonna get, we got to throw the last second. Look at this new way. construction all over. I know. The city's changing. Burbank's man. coming up. Yeah. Well, if you are climbing a mountain during the worst air quality of the year, you may <laughs> be someone who could use advice. My throat feels crazy. Yeah, my too. And I know one guy who's great for advice. He's actually my friend. His name is Miles, and he's right here, and he's going to give it to you. This is advice that'll go for Miles with your host, Miles Bonsignore. It's advice that'll go for Miles. Tune it to your radio station. It's advice that'll go for Miles. Everyone get ready. Miles Nation. Miles Nation, go. Advice that'll go four miles. Advice that'll go four miles. What's up, Miles Nation? How's everybody doing tonight? Yeah. Do you want to smash? Yeah. Do you want to? F- yeah. <laughs> I have a little treat for you. That's the way that you're gonna get slammed. It's doing away with the old ways of having a crispy little beefcake and having a new crispy little beefcake that's the only way to do. You? Only have smash burgers. Regular burgers are literally canceled. (laughs) What? Oh, it's thick, full of fucking meat instead of a crispy little beefcake with a little patty of cheese? I made smash burgers for all my friends... Um, well, some of my friends, because Zach was obviously not there, <laughs> uh, yesterday at 4th of July, and I really enjoyed it. But, uh, no, I made smash burgers yesterday on a little griddle that actually Try Guys gave me because we were giving it away after a food video. Oh, is it the, the Twisted Tea one? No, it's the Blackstone. Oh. It's kind of great. You got, like, a good one. I know. I was kind of surprised that they gave it away. And yeah, why like, did we do that? I don't, I don't know. know. On a barbecue? We gave, like, four of them away. What? I took one. What? I know. I... I, I'm not giving it back. Anyway, I, know, I love it. Should, should I have taken one? I, Probably. They're great grills. Fuck. So I made smash burgers, and I just got to say, they're a better burger. I can, I kind of like the thick burger that you're getting at, like, a Chili's. I just feel like it's too thick. It's too much kind of meat without enough crispy. Shots fired. And Chili's. I just really like a smash burger. I don't, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's my mood that I feel smashed. But, um... I think it's just a better type of burger, and if you're looking for a crispy little beefcake, I think to do that. Also, by the way, if you're making Beyond Burgers, Keith yeah. actually had this hot wreck. Smash those, too. Smash them. If you got Beyond Meat or whatever, because Beyond Meat especially really benefits from being crispy and little and thin. Yeah. Because the, and getting extra salty and I add the condiments on, that's right. what's going to make it delish. Love that. I will say that because of the way that this 4th of July weekend was structured, mm. too many burgers. Interesting. It so. was, it was, uh, you know, I went to this Palm Springs house on Saturday. Yeah. We were there through Tuesday. Whoa. And th- so that's, that's what, four days of grilling? That's a lot of grill. That's too much grill. Yeah. How, what did you have the most of? Portobello mushroom. Fucking like impossible burgers and shitty overcooked salmon. Jesus. Shots fired at the guy who grilled. Yeah. Shout out to Jason. Appreciate you. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. Um, I do. F- feel that my, the air quality is bad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to the last episode ever. Uh, no, g- come on over to uh, our Patreon. Listen to our brand oh, yeah. new show. It's going to be a good time. The first Tri-Tri-Pod is a pod. Uh, What is the first step? 
Tripod Plus. It's it's the one we recorded um, two weeks ago. Well, don't tell me. Tell them. Okay. We discussed not only what the show should be called, but also behind the scenes on a bunch of different videos that we're working on. Um, it's a banger. It's me, Zach, and Rainey in the studio. So if you're looking for a more studio-friendly environment instead of uh, the plog. <laughs> instead of this chaos. Instead of this chaos. You can head over there to um, hear us talk about some behind the scenes stuff and uh, Rainey's first appearance in the video. This is where the Fine Brothers used to work. Should I dox them? Thanks for listening, everybody.